Hi guys, my name is Carl Renneman. And today I wanna to give you guys a backstory of who I am, my life, and perhaps share a song with you guys. So I was actually raised in Washington state and I was actually there until I was 25. During the time I was in Washington, I started making some bad decisions. So when I was 25, I flew down. Um, at that time, my dad was actually living um, in a little town called Grantville in Utah. And so I went to Utah and went to go live with my dad. At that time, my mom was just going to school. Um, a little while later, my mom actually came back from school and, and began to live with us again. After You have to remember, this was during the Christmas time. It happened in November that I came to Utah. And what happened was, after Christmas, um, we actually, went, me and my family, we went to Temple Square. And I can tell you, the experience I had at Temple Square is so amazing. I'm actually a Latter-day Saint. And I came to Utah because of the, the church. There's a building that has a statue of Christ. I remember it so clearly that I was at a window. And my mom said something to the fact that don't you always feel the spirit when you're here? At that, at that exact moment, I started began. To, I began to cry because I could feel the spirit so strong. Um. So later on, and this is a couple months down the road, my family decided to leave Utah because my dad got a job as a truck driver. So I actually went to a, um, like a nursing home for people with disabilities. The care center I was in, I mean, they taught me a lot of things, but I was, kind of in an institution. Um, I was told what time to wake up, you know, and I really didn't have that independence. I was there for a couple years. That's when I met Mike's wife. And to protect her identity, I'm not going to mention her name. Just know that that was my ex-wife. Um, and we began to date. And what happened was she and I fell in love and I got married. After we got married, things went from good to bad. It began to be a very, very toxic, toxic relationship. All we did was fight about finances, fight about this, fight about that. And we began to hurt each other. Not me just hurting her, her hurting me, me her hurting her. It was both ways. After that, during that time, I finally said, enough is enough. 
things have to change. So we got separated. And she went to go live with her family. I'm going to make things short. Things did not work out for us as we hoped. And it ended up that we got a divorce. Now, during the separation, because I knew this was going to end in a divorce, I began to lose weight. I went from 200 to 140 to 130. Guys, that's insanely ridiculous. I don't recommend anybody losing that much weight. But I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I finally decided I should move to Salt Lake City. After I left my apartment, I went to go live near downtown. And I can tell you that it really you know, work out for me down there. And the landlord gave me three days to move. Not having anywhere to go, I finally went back to Ogden. I was homeless for one night. One night, I was homeless. And then, I finally decided to check myself into a behavioral um, Like it was a behavioral center. And there I was able to get a hold of the group home I had met my max hyphen. And they decided to take me back. After they took me back, it took me a year and a half to get the strength that I needed because I had lost a lot of weight, a lot of sleep, and they were able to take me in here for me and I was able to gain my weight back. During that time, I was then able to get a funding, which I then got out of a nursing home. If it was not for them, I would not have what I have today. After that, I then went to go live with my best friend in, in a group home. I was there for about a year. And then I was like, no, I really want to live in a host home. So I tried a couple out. A couple of them did not work. My last host home I was in, I'm not going to mention her name. Just know that she was awesome. Very amazing to me. To me, she was caring. She talked to me as one of her own kids. She took care of me. And to her, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And now I live in a home, in a group home. It's just me under coding. It is a group home, but I consider it my home. And that's kind of my backstory. I do now have a job at Subway. I, I just got the job as of yesterday. And so moving forward, I just want to express my love for the people that have helped me. If you are experiencing mental health, know that, it, that it's not too late. There are people out there that will help you, that will care for you. A lot of people have a hard time advocating for themselves. I believe that you have to advocate for yourself before you can advocate for others. And if you do that, you can make a change in this world. There are so many people out there that need help. and. I honestly feel that it's people like myself who are out there trying to make a difference. We are trying to 
and make a change one step at a time. Thank you for coming to, the, to this video. I hope you have learned a lot. And I hope for the best. Introducing, we are the world, sung by myself. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. There comes a time when we hear a certain call when the world must come together as one There are people dying and it's time to lend a hand to life the greatest gift of all We can't go on Day by day, that someone, somewhere will make a change. We are all a part of God's great big family. And the truth you know, love is all we need. Oh, we are the children. Change can only